A Syrian refugee is living out the script of the 2004 Tom Hanks starer, The Terminal. He's made friends with the staff and showers in the terminal's bathrooms, but there's a difference too. Hassan Al Kontar is stuck in Kuala Lumpur, not New York. And unlike Hanks, who's a citizen of the made up Krakosia in the movie, Al Kontar is from a very real country facing a very real war, Syria. He's been stranded at the Kuala Lumpur budget terminal for the past 56 days. He's been posting videos detailing his daily life on Twitter and Facebook and has attracted the attention of human rights groups and the media alike. He's even tagged Tom Hanks and called his plight the Terminal 2 in several of his tweets. I did not see my family since uh, almost nine years now. I lost my father. I, I could not attend the funeral. This is a story of hundreds of Syrians who, is stuck, who are stuck in the airports. Uh, suffering because of uh, their nationality and uh, uh, passport they are holding. Uh, airlines are, are not allowing us to board because of our nationality. We are facing a kind of racism uh, uh, and hateness, rejected, unwanted. Al Kontar occasionally splurges on a coffee, but he ends up shelling out a little extra to get the airport staff to get it to him. When it's time to sleep, he stretched out, stretches out as best as he can on the floor or on the usually rather uncomfortable seats on offer at most airports. Good morning, everyone. It's uh, 10 a.m. here in Kuala Lumpur International Airport. Yesterday night I slept for uh, four hours straight with no, with no breakups. It felt good. I can feel my strength again. Um, I start my plans today to get some coffee. I'm still working on it. It, it will happen. It will take some time, but it will happen. I can, I can feel the coffee now and smell it. I need it, uh, but it takes some time. Al Kantar left his home in Syria in 2006 to avoid compulsory military service. He sought out a more prosperous life in the UAE, but after the Syrian civil war started, the Syrian embassy refused to renew his travel documents. His resident visa wasn't issued either. He was then expelled from the UAE. Since then, he's been unable to seek asylum in any other country. And joining me this evening on the fine print from Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia is Hassan Al Konta himself. Hassan, good evening. I've read uh, that you're still wanted in Syria. Why exactly is that? Yes, uh, in Syria we have a compulsory military service. Yearly, you need to uh, to send uh, an official document to your from your embassy to uh, to the military office in your town, just to delay or postpone your military service, not to be wanted. But in 2011, they uh, I could not send that document, so I become a wanted. You need five documents, then after that you need to pay a, a certain amount. It was before the war; it was three thousand five hundred dollars. But when the war started, they raise it until it reach eight thousand dollars. So I was not having that much of money, so I become wanted. Since then, my last visit to Syria was in December two thousand eight. Can I ask you, um, where is your family right now, Hassan? Are they in the UAE? Are they in Syria? Where are they? They are in Syria. I lost my father in 2016, 31-12-2016, uh, New Year's Eve. I could not attend his funeral because I'm wanted in Syria. And uh, that's a time of a sadness, you know, it will never leave you, you know, to keep uh, uh, feeling that you failed him, and you was not there uh, during his sickness or the time he wanted you to be to support him. So uh, I'm, I'm paying the price, I'm paying the bill of others who are in our land. I, uh, I refuse to join the fight not because I'm a coward, but because I uh, believe in peace and love. It's not our fight. Uh, it's not my, I'm not a killing machine or a bad killing machine to kill my own brothers or to uh, destroy my own home. So I uh, I refuse this fight. I refuse that war is not an answer. War is not, war is not a solution. Blood will bring only blood. So uh, and you as a, a, an Indian nation, a great nation who has a, a great icon like Mahatma Gandhi, will know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, with the non-violence uh, solutions you approach like the uh, French occupation. Right. So uh, 
And that's why I choose to speak to you at the channel today, because your people will understand me that war is not the solution. Well, we really appreciate, uh, Hassan, uh, you speaking with us. Can I ask you, though, where exactly are you hopeful of going from here? Is anyone helping you in that process? Uh, now, uh, there is some news. Uh, I don't know if it's a good news or a bad news. We did not get the result yet, but uh, it's a news at least. Some amazing volunteers. Uh, they are mainly from Canada. They uh, get all the uh, necessary documents. Uh, sponsor association, private sponsor association, lawyer, and they raise the money as well. So they submit all the documents to the uh, Canadian government. And we are waiting the response of the immigration minister there, and hopefully it will take time. I can understand that. I can respect the procedure and the internal law in the of the all people and uh, about their safety first. So it, it may take time, but this is the only uh, solution. This is the only people who approach me and give me a solution. All the other world who. It's since 20 days, almost 20 days now, they are just uh, scooping me and uh, in the terminal move for them, but uh, none of the governments and authorities who say that uh, they are the Syrian people friends, right. none of them has, I am here actually because at least two of them, only Canada was uh, and is a great nation, uh, government who give me their hand to help. Okay. Um, there's so That's much all. noise behind you, obviously, because you are at the, a terminal of an airport after all. Lots of people catching their flights. Hassan, you uh, brought up the movie The Terminal, and of course there have been many comparisons to the movie, but do you feel that that takes away from the seriousness of your situation, or do you feel it's helped you out? Both are correct. At the beginning it was correct, yes. Uh, it's. Uh, it's actually the terminal. Uh, when people start uh, pointing it as a, the uh, terminal movie, uh, I watched it like uh, 10 or 11 years ago, then I uh, re-download it and uh, download it again and re-watch it. And uh, yes, it's very similar. But uh, I, uh, when he was uh, trying, uh, how he was trying to eat or take a shower or uh, sleep, right. it's very similar in the uh, temporary daily problems. But it's still a show. And uh, this is a real uh, show here. It's difficult to spend 24 hours in a, an airport stuck to a certain area, uh, limited access. But uh, yes, you can have an idea through the terminal itself. I'm still missing one thing from the terminal. He has a crush on Catherine Victor Jones. I'm still looking at the flight attendants. Maybe I will see her face, but. No luck so far. <laughs> well, best of luck, Hassan, in, uh, of course, finding your Catherine Zeta-Jones and, of course, in uh, making your way across to Canada. Hopefully, that's where it seems that you're headed uh, next. Thank you also for speaking with us this evening on uh, Fine Print. We appreciate you taking out the time. Right, uh, let's... Thank you very much for your time. Yeah. Okay. So...